Hey guys, today I'm excited. I'm going to be showing you our homeschool room. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stacy, and here my channel is all about being a wife, a mom to four boys, living overseas, and homeschooling. So today I am excited. I'm going to be showing you guys our homeschool room, and I'm sitting here in it. So last year we repainted in here, so this year I didn't feel like it needed to be repainted, but I just went through and freshened it up, changed out a couple of things, um, we swapped a couple of things, and so yeah, I'm going to show you guys around. This video is in collaboration with a bunch of other homeschool moms, and I will have the playlist linked down below. They're all going to show you their homeschool rooms. <laughs> Hey guys, I am working on editing this video and I realized I forgot to say that the host of the lady hosting this collab is Vani from Miss Mom's Homeschool. So I will have her link down below and be sure to check out her channel. Kaden. <laughs> Peekaboo. Peekaboo. Hi. So we live in a city. You might hear dogs barking. Um, so I wanted to say that we do have a homeschool room, but even if you live in a small house and you don't have room for a homeschool room, you can still homeschool. Um, I know a lot of people just do it at their kitchen table or on the living room floor. And even though we have a room to homeschool in, we still end up homeschooling all over the house. Sometimes we'll load up and go to a coffee shop or different places like that. So with homeschooling, you have lots of flexibility. Uh, we live here in Cambodia and it's really hot and humid year round and we don't have AC in our school room, we just have a fan over here on the wall and it can get really annoying always blowing our papers away and stuff so sometimes if we have a big crash project or it's a really hot day, like one day it was up in 120 with high humidity um, we'll occasionally go to our bedroom because that's where we have an AC and just do it in there and it's nice for a change. So the great thing about homeschooling is you can just take your books and go where you want. So when you watch these videos of all these people in their homeschool rooms, just know that you don't have to have the latest and greatest to homeschool. Um, it does make your homeschool room pretty and makes it fun, but um, I'll show you a couple things around here that I am just like making do with because I don't want to spend the money on other stuff right now. So one thing we did when we were making this room is we tried to use things that we already had and just try to get it to serve different purposes so that way we don't have to buy more things. Um, my husband helped me do a couple DIY projects in here that way um, we'd save money doing that also. So as I go around the room, I'll show you guys those things. All right, so I'll show you guys the room now. So this is the door outside when you walk into our little school room here. This is Creed in here. He is having a snack, helping mom video. <laughs> so this is our little table that we sit at and I'm homeschooling the twins who are in first grade this year and this is my two year old. He's often in here with us. So that's why we have three chairs and then I sit on that side over there. Sometimes we have Kate and the baby in here with us also. So we live in a city here in Cambodia and a lot of the houses are set up they have um, like this is on our second floor and they have like a window here that looks down into the first floor a lot of the houses are set up like that we try to keep the windows closed for safety so kids don't fall out so when you walk in this kind of the first thing you see we have a fan on the wall down here is kind of like our little reading area and we sit here sometimes in the morning for our morning time or for read alouds the boys like to just go lay there down there too this here my husband made and this is magnetic and that way our letter tiles stay on here. Last year we did all about reading and so this is still left from that. And we still use the letters on here. We pull them down to form different words. Okay, and then this here is a bookshelf and on here I had balloons hanging on there the first day of school and they could pop them and there's different activities in there for them to do. This here is just a jar with a bunch of cotton balls that we use for counting and sorting. My two year old just sorts the colors, stuff like that. Over here is just um, a plant, and this here is an old jar that I spray painted. I need to re-spray paint it. The paint's coming off a little bit. This is some different Bible resources we have. It's kind of my husband's. Okay, the next two shelves are books. Sorry, Creed is back here, and he's really enjoying his little candy he's sucking on. <laughs> it's a good Creed. Yeah. Good. So this shelf down here is like kids' books, and over here is board books that is like for my two-year-old and baby and stuff. And yeah, just other kids' books. And then this shelf up here is books for a little bit older kids or more for read-alouds and stuff. And then on this side, I have a bunch of Bible story books um, that I pick from and we read different stories in the morning to the boys. And this one here is like by Shel Silverstein. It's just like a story. It's not really a Bible story one, but yeah, all different ones. This was a picture frame that I didn't have a picture in, and so Zeke drew me something to put in there. <laughs> that was so sweet of him. 
Okay, now down here on the bottom, I have a bunch of puzzles and stuff over here and different logic games, and over here's more puzzles. This little box over here in the corner is for my preschooler and baby. This here is just like a toy for the baby. Um, then we have several different puzzles here for my wooden puzzles for my preschooler. Some toys, so if he's in here playing, he can get that. And then um, here is an example of instead of having a basket, I had this box that came with printer paper, and so this works well. Uh, to be repurposed for a basket. I would like to eventually get a nice basket here, but I haven't found one that I liked yet. And we have books in here that I do with my preschooler in the morning before our school starts. I like to spend like 10, 15 minutes with him, and we'll do some of these things in the spin, puzzles and read some of his books to him. Um, I just got from Let's Play School. She has an Etsy shop, and I just got her Play and Learn numbers for my two-year-old. Okay, so this is from Chelsea, Let's Play School. She's on Instagram, and she has an Etsy shop, and she creates all kinds of fun stuff for preschool, kindergarten, first graders, even second graders could use it. Um, so I got this for my preschooler. It's the Play and Learn numbers pack. She also has a Play and Learn ABC pack that I want to get in the future. But I'm planning to keep this in my binder, but for now, I don't have all the pack printed. I only have two like things from the pack printed so far. This is one of them, so I just keep my basket. When I have them all printed, I'm planning to put it in a binder, but um, it's papers that I laminated, and then it comes with all these little like cars. And so like you can trace the number with your finger, you can put like the amount, like number one, that car on there, you could pretend you're driving on the number. Um, and do it for each one. And she is up to number 20, but for now I just have these done for him because that's these are the numbers I'm working on with him. And the pack also comes with like first, second, third, and all of, all of them up to number 20. Um, so you could use like real matchbox cars and do like a race and like, you know, give the winner the first the first one, second one, third one, so on. Um, yeah, so there's lots of like different play ideas you could do with this. Um, you could also put them in a line on the floor and have the child like, go stand on number two, go stand on number four, like that. And then this is the other one I've got printed so far from that pack. Like I said, there's a bunch more I haven't printed yet. But this is the ice cream one. You have a cone and then you just have the ice cream things. And I can't find number two. For some reason, it's, my material must have carried it off. But you can put the ice cream things on here. And you could put Velcro dots on this if you're going to keep it in a binder and keep it in there. But for now, I just have it that we played on the floor. And we keep it in this little box. And these go up to 20 also. But my material isn't quite there yet. I will try to link her Etsy shop down below in the description box if you guys want to check it out. She has lots of great stuff. All right, and then moving on from that basket up here, um, I have four of these different ones around the room. They're for helping to learn sight words. And so the idea is they're supposed to say, you can see here, we can see downstairs. They're supposed to say um, the sight word that's in the box and dab as they do it. And I'll show you the other ones when we get to those. This number line goes around two walls of our room. Okay, and then moving on to this desk. Down here, I keep some posters that I do with my two-year-old. I don't like to have all of them out all the time on the wall, but I just pull them out and do them on the floor with him, and that works good. Um, we recently did the Good and the Beautiful, their safety unit, and this here is safety rules from them, and so I just have them on here. And we're planning to do two more units from the Good and the Beautiful, and so then I'll use this for like vocab wall. Okay, and then moving on over here. Down here, I just have a little rug on the floor. We have all tile floor here. Um, and I wish we could change the tile to something else, but this is what we have for now. We're just renting, so it's fine. Anyway, a rug there, a trash can. And I'll just start right here and go around. So this here is from the Good and the Beautiful Math Level 1. It was supposed to go to Dry Erase Sleep Pocket, but I didn't have any, so I found this here. It's like a stand for like a business or something. And it works really well. The boys enjoy writing on their Dry Erase markers and stuff. This here is just an abagus. This here is a game down there. We had this last year. This is my homeschool planner that I made. So um, if you guys like to see that, I have a video called DIY Homeschool Planner and you guys can see in there. And it's working really good so far. I really am happy with it. I just keep it on my desk because I like to mark in there what we did um, pretty often. Um, over here we have a room for place for extension cords because you know you always need to plug in more stuff and some candles and my water bottle. This is actually um, an infusion one where it has an insert you can put in to put fruit and stuff in there um, if you want it. I just don't have it in currently, but I like that. It helps motivate me if my water's flavored a little bit. I need to get something, my water bottle sweats a lot when I have ice in it because it's so hot here and I need to get something pretty to set it on here. But for now I just have a washcloth which works well when we spill something in here and I can just grab that to wipe it up right away. <laughs> 
but um, I like that it has a little handle and I can carry it around with me to room to room if I need to. Okay, so that's kind of that part of the desk. My husband actually built this desk for us. Um, he built it originally as an office desk and we turned it into a homeschool desk. Um, up here at the top, you see the number line, Cambodia flag, you live in Cambodia. This is just where I keep all of our like pens and pencils. So I'll start over here at this side. We have prayer sticks in here and the boys wrote all different, like their cousins' names on it and like grandma and grandpa, church, different things on there. Um, and they can pick one each morning that they pray for or praise God for. You have some uh, paintbrushes in here. And some days if they're just talking too much, I use these little sticks and give them each like six and have, and they I say they're not allowed to talk unless they raise their hand first <laughs> we don't normally do this it's just some days when they're just talking a lot and I'm really trying to teach them something and then I'll say that each time they talk during the lesson without raising their hand I take away one stick and if at the end if they still have all six sticks or however many sticks they get maybe like one little M&M per stick or something like that but we don't do that maybe like once every two weeks or so it's not real often it's just when mom really needs a little bit more quiet. Okay, moving on over here. These these are just two fake plants. I have in here to add some green, pop-up green color. This is a globe we made from clay. This here is dot markers and glitter glue sticks. Um, my boys enjoy playing with all of those. And then we just have different kinds of markers and dry erase markers back there. And it's nice because I can just pull one jar off the table if we need it. A lamp. And yeah, that is that corner. And then moving over here, so I have a book display here. I like the cup, the touch of the copper color. Um, and I just have different books on display here. And then back here I have books that go with like our unit study that we're currently doing. And again, I like to get a nice basket to put it in, but for now I just have a box and it works. And then I also have some different clay and stuff that we use to make like that globe that I have in here that went with that unit we were doing. All right, and then moving over here from the desk, I'll come back and show you what's inside the desk in just a minute. So at the top, we have games and stuff over here. This here is um, some flashcards from last year, all about reading. And we did all about reading level one last year. We really liked it. And I say the flashcards because sometimes we still use those. And um, if you're wondering, I had no problem with all about reading. We really loved it. It was just they don't have it available by PDF. I emailed the company and asked. So this year we're trying out the good and beautiful of their language arts and we're really really liking it so far and in fact that's the flashcards then i have up here let me show you so these are the flashcards from the good and beautiful and i just have this little storage box but you're supposed to have it like three be able to have it categorized in three different sets and i can only fit two in here so i actually got this um here and if I can do it with one hand, <laughs> um, it has a bunch of different categories which I thought might work good because I could keep the twins um, flashcards separate that way. The one maybe needs more, that way if one of them needs more review with a certain set of flashcards, um, I can keep them separate. For right now, I just have them mixed together the ones they need review with. And um, I think it would be nice to be able to keep them separate. And then in here, I have the mini books that go with what we're currently reading. And so they fit in here really well. This is just a pencil box. And then these other little card storage boxes, we just have like Uno and charades and some games in those. They work really well because they stack so good. Okay, so that's where I keep that. And then moving down here, this is just a clock and some markers that I, permanent markers I don't want the kids to be able to get to. Those are moms. <laughs> um, over here, this is kind of stuff for the future. We're gonna, these three here, we're gonna be doing some more science unit sites and Good and Beautiful, so I got that for those. I'm gonna put those in there. I don't have them printed yet. Some books, we're gonna do the mammal unit study, that's for that. This is some different teacher guides. This here is a binder that um, I keep like papers, memory papers the boys do that I wanna keep in there and have one for my two year old also. Um, if you wanna know more about that, I talk about it more in my video um, called Ideas for First Day of School, and I explain it a little bit more in there, so I will try to link that below and watch that one. It's a good way to keep things throughout the year that you think you might want to keep. And then the big board on the end is just working as a bookend. It's actually for a chore chart, magnetic chore chart, but we currently aren't using it for that. And I'm just using this bookend to keep my books from falling off the edge. <laughs> okay, and then moving down, um, these are the books that we do daily with boys. And I just have them on stacks. Like this is Zeke's stack and this is Zadok's stack. That way in the morning it's easy for me to grab. I just grab a stack and put it on the table. And then, then we work down through the stack and it's easy for the boys to see like, oh, look, my stack's getting smaller. I only have one book left or whatever it is. 
So if you're curious, the ones we do daily is their math, their language arts, their handwriting, and I have explored the code down there. Okay, and then over here I have um, books that we do more once in a while. Um, this is a book I'm currently going over with my two-year-old. This is just, yeah, it's just random stuff. Some activities I'm currently doing with my two-year-old. A notebook, all different things. We have science in here. I have the daily fundamentals, and we don't do this one daily. We just do it as we feel like it. We have our jot it down from Brave Writer in here, and just some different activity books. Yeah, all different things like that. Moving down the next shelf. Okay, over here is a bunch of dry erase things. These are the Melissa and Doug Wow ones. Somebody gave like each of my boys one. Um, these are different notebooks, sticker book. This is like just paper, extra paper to write on. Um, these are some more dry erase Osborne books. This is a big maze book. And then we have some watercolor paper. In the middle section here, I have leveled readers that they can go through and read. Like this is the good and beautiful one. And then over here I have binders and this was a lot of stuff we used this past summer. This is just some extra reading comprehension. I'll occasionally do a page with them. Moving down the bottom shelf, this is coloring books, crayons, a manipulative kit. I have things in here for them to do with their hands while I'm doing a read aloud. There is game pieces in here for this big Candyland carpet game. And then over here is blocks that my two-year-old plays with and I do different spelling word activities with the boys. Okay, on this wall we have ABC letters up there and a big whiteboard. It's actually just a piece of glass my husband hung on the wall there. And we have more sight word practice there. They fist bump it and high five it. And my two year old sitting here and then we're back around at the door again. And now moving on, I'll show you guys inside this desk. So like I said, my husband built this desk for us a while ago. He originally built it as an office desk, but it kind of turned into a homeschool room desk or kind of a mix really between the two. So the top drawer here is his stuff. He has things in there and the bottom drawer. And this bottom drawer, we have um, just white paper for the boys to draw on. This here, um, one here is construction paper and this one is construction paper. And then we have one of the stickers and then cardstock in the back. Okay, this one here is kind of like teacher supply stuff. It has everything. <laughs> um, so, oh, where do I start? I guess I'll just start over here. It looks a little messy, but everything kind of has its spot. Um, and this little basket is scissors and pencil sharpeners. Um, someday I want to get a real pencil sharpener, but for now we just have these little ones. This here is a glue stick and um, little sticky notes, more glue. Back there I have wet wipes. That is like the best kept secret. I have wet wipes and some napkins in here to clean up messes that happen. Um, we got tape back there and um, tape and staples and also some of these like bookmark things. I really like these to keep track of where we're at in the boys' school books and the easy turn to the correct page. And then we have a stapler and paper clips. We got a box of crayons and extra paper. Thinking putty, the boys play with this sometimes when I'm doing reading to them. This is kind of um, pens that I don't want the boys to get into as much. Markers, permit markers, some special pens, stuff like that. And then this one here they can have access to. We got erasers, just more like regular pencils, colored pencils, and just some cheaper pens and highlighters. And then these here are numbers for a calendar that we had hang up last year, and I'm not sure if I'm going to put it this year or not. Um, rubber bands and clips, and then this is for a ticket system we have with the boys. Okay, and then moving over here, this is more of my husband's stuff in there. And then in here I have craft supplies. So my husband built this um, so that way these white boxes fit in the shelves. Um, on the doors is just a poster, oh my god, for kids. And on this side, um, these are just papers I made that I laminated. This is for Zeke and this is for Zadok. And these are Velcro. And so like to do and done. They can move them to that side when they're done. We don't do this every day, but this days where I feel they need extra motivation. And these are actually their math from like last year. I need to update it to the first grade math, but yeah. All right, so I think I'll just start on the top shelf up here. So I wanna make cute little labels for these white boxes, but I haven't so far. Um, this one I just wrote teacher stuff on. This one here I keep math manipulatives in for their math. It's kind of like a latch mate bin. Um, and I really like it. I have like dry erase boards in there and stuff. And it's got like a nice handle and compartments. This here is like a tray and it can lift it out, which is really nice. And I just have some erasers in here we use for manipulatives. They think it's a lot of fun. My two-year-old also enjoys just playing with them. 
And then I have dry erase boards in there. And when I get the actual kit for their math level one, I'm gonna put be putting that stuff in here. Okay, so that's that. And then moving over here, I have a bunch of like letters for manipulatives. With the Good and the Beautiful, they have them do different spelling. And sometimes, sometimes I'll have them use these things here. Let me show you guys. So this here is just like a scrapple game. And so I'll just have them use the pieces to spell words. This here, my friend Krista gave to me, it's stamps. And we have a stamp pad and they think it's fun to stamp the words. And then I got some chalkboards here. This here is letters from my letter board and I just have them stored in here. And then these here are little like manipulatives that have letters on them and they connect together and so you could use that to build different words. So these are just fun ways to help make their schoolwork more enjoyable. All right, and then moving down to the middle shelf, um, as you can see on the label, it just says like teacher stuff and then it says like a lot of like water, arts and crafts, watercolor paint stuff games and crafts and boys craft supplies. That one's more like foam stickers and different things like that. Moving down to the bottom shelf is I have like some maps and some big posters. I just pull out when we need them. I don't like to have them out all the time. Um, some construction, more construction paper, a big tablet of watercolor paper, a weaving loom and their math kit from last year. And we're still using a couple of things in there since I don't have their math kit yet for this year, but it's coming. And then over here on the top is a little sewing kit that my son got for his birthday last year. And then this here is a big um, jump rope. So that is what is in our kind of like craft closet. So that is our homeschool room. I really like it. There's a lot of good memories hopefully being made in here. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching the tour of our homeschool room. This room is really special to me. A lot of love has gone into this room. A lot of time is spent in here teaching the boys, interacting with them. And um, it's a lot of learning for me as a mom to have patience and to um, just learn how to teach my kids the best way, how to manage all four of them when they're in here, something like that. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you guys again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.